Okay, good morning from Canada. Welcome to a student development live session. Today is the third part to our variations and modifications practice. We've already um, dived into a whole bunch of asana in parts one and two, and this will be the third and final part today, mainly focusing on um, hips, folds, and some gentle supported back bends. So everything today will be floor based. And as always, you'll need a ton of props in order for us to access these variations and modifications. So if you can bring your mat, a blanket, a bolster, a couple of blocks and a strap to your mat today, or anything that resembles those items in your house. And if you'd like to simply watch and take notes, that's fine. If you want to participate so you can really um, feel these adjustments in your own body, then feel free to come along. I will be probably getting through about six asana. So it's pretty quick from one to the other. So we're gonna get straight on in. And the first option, um, or the first pose even, is uh, Sukhasana, an easy seat. So I'll meet you on your mat. Now, I'm just going to open with the pose. So no props simply sitting directly on the floor, rooting the pelvis down, legs crossed. You can have one leg slightly over the top of the other, or you could have one leg slightly in front of the other, depending on what feels good in your body. And then hands on the thighs, the belly, the heart, or maybe in mudra. Sukhasana, easy pose. From here, there are lots of ways to make this more accessible for our students. First option is to elevate the hips. So placing a bolster or a block underneath the pelvis can immediately make this shape far more accessible. It gives the hips a bit more space. It can help to lengthen the spine so we have better alignment in this pose. So bolster under the hips. Another option is a blanket. This has become a personal favorite of mine. Placing a blanket under the heels, under the ankles, so under the lower legs here, just for a little extra comfort and support and padding, especially if you're going to be sitting in this pose for a considerable amount of time, maybe in a pranayama or meditation practice, you want to feel like you could settle here. So this is just a nice added comfort level, blanket under the ankles. And then some students might have knee or hip sensitivity. So the blocks under the knees at any height or, or a little higher under the hips here so that the legs have something to rest into so that they feel supported, but they can also relax. There's nothing worse than sitting and clenching and trying to hold a shape while being in meditation. It's not going to happen. So offering blocks to support the legs, support the hips might be what your students need. Now, if having the legs crossed is not appropriate, then there is of course the option to extend the legs. You could just make the legs a little bit wider than the hips, and maybe this is more comfortable. There's also the option to lean into a wall so that the back is supported. Maybe the legs remain crossed, or maybe the legs extend. Or another option is to sit in a chair. Maybe accessing the floor is not appropriate for some students, but sitting in a chair and finding good posture in a chair would be. So you can encourage students to come to the middle of their chair, lift their back out of the back of the chair so that they are engaging in good posture and um, activating the muscles around the spine. 
and maybe that is where they settle. So even from the very, very beginning of your practice, maybe your beginning in Sukhasana, there is a multitude of options for our students to make sure they are grounded, they are comfortable, and they have access to all of these options so that they can find the right fit for them. So this was Sukhasana, easy pose. Our second shape today is dragon or lizard pose as some of you may know it. So for this shape, we're going to come onto our hands and knees to begin. So here we are, hands and knees. Right from the beginning here, right from the get-go, I would offer a blanket or some extra padding under the knees because it is likely that one or other knee will be on the floor any given time in this shape. So a blanket under the knees would be the first option. And then we're finding the hands under the shoulders like we would in tabletop position. And to come into this shape, we're going to extend our right leg back behind us. So you're on the ball of your right foot. Float your right heel to the same height as your right hip. And then bend your right knee into your chest and start to lightly step your right foot forwards between your two hands. From here, shuffle your right foot as wide as your mat. And here you can either keep your right toes facing directly forwards or you can turn your right toes slightly out, maybe off your mat. Now this option really just varies depending on how your hips feel in this pose. So experiment with that. Does it feel better with the right foot facing forwards? Does that help you get into a nice deep lunge and everything feels happy and safe? Or are your hips a little more turned out? Do you need to turn your right toes off the mat slightly to engage in that deeper lunge. Once that is decided, your hands come inside the right foot on your mat, and I would offer either flat hands to the floor, fingertips to the floor, or hands to blocks. And your hands can be on blocks at any height. Low would be the very bottom height, flat hands to the top of the blocks. Medium height, hands gripping around, the skinny edge of the block or the highest height so your chest is a little taller. And then from here you might encourage your students just to rock the hips back and forth a little bit, finding that deeper lunge. Now once the pelvis has moved forwards and down into the depth of your lunge here, your students might keep the chest lifted, the shoulders rolling back, and breathe into the front lines of the body, breathe into that left hip flexor, and this could be everything that they need. Further to this, your students might like to lower their forearms down. So lowering the chest and maybe bringing the forearms onto blocks. If that feels a bit too low, try blocks and a bolster for the forearms. Or if your students are feeling pretty open in this shape, they want to take it a little further. Maybe they do this without any props underneath their forearms. So maybe the forearms come directly onto the floor, but maybe the forehead takes a block. This can be a really nice release for the neck. Now further to this, there's lots of ways you can develop this pose. So here you are in the depth of the pose, but maybe you offer to tuck the back toes, the, the left toes, and lift the back knee up and off the floor. So you're starting to make this a little more fiery, a little more strength based. 
And as you're pushing your left heel back, you're also pressing your forearms into the floor so your chest is lifting. So you feel your shoulders and upper arms engage. So there's one option. Maybe your students stay with the knee up or down on the floor. You can always give them that variety. Another option is to lift the right toes up and off the floor. Just peeling the right toes up and maybe rolling to the outer edge of that right foot. This is called wing dragon. And always reminding your students only to come into this if they don't have any knee, hip, or ankle sensitivity, because you don't have such a solid base in this version, but it can offer a deeper hip stretch for those that it feels good for. So wing dragon is an option. Another option is to come into a twist with perhaps a quadricep stretch. So I'm placing that right foot back on the floor for this. I'm keeping the left hand or left forearm rooting down to the floor. I'm turning the chest to the right and extending the right arm back behind me. So I have this lovely opening through the chest, a gentle twist through the back. And I'm looking to the right wall or up towards the sky. You could stay like this or you could bend into that left knee, bringing the left foot towards you and seeing if your right hand and your left foot can meet one another. Or you could use your strap here, hooking the strap around the top of that left foot the rest, the rest of the strap is in your right hand and you're using the strap as a little lever to bring your left heel closer to your glute. Keep the shoulders relaxed and the chest open. And then slowly coming back up onto your hands, turning your chest to face forwards wiggling that right foot in between your two hands. And from here, you might step back to down dog or you might simply step back to tabletop and just enjoy a gentle release through the hips. Maybe rocking, maybe extending one leg back at a time. And there you have it. There's dragon or lizard pose with all its variations. From here, we'll move down onto our front body. So from tabletop, you will come all the way down, bending the elbows, lowering onto your belly and chest. And obviously, if this was a regular class, just a little reminder that you would, of course, do dragon or lizard pose on the other side of the body at some point in the practice. But for the, this practice, I'm just showing you one side so we can get through more asana. So now we're coming into Sphinx pose, which is a back bend, a chest opener. So for this, there is lots of options because we know there is lots of back sensitivity in our classes. So the first option is to create a very gentle back bend just for the cervical spine. So you would ask students to place one hand on top of the other and just rest the chin to those hands. So it's just the head and neck that are slightly lifted. This might be enough. Further to this, maybe you encourage students to bring their arms in front of them in parallel and start to explore how much they walk the forearms closer to them. Obviously, the more they walk the forearms towards themselves, the more the chest is going to lift, so the more compression there will be in the back of the spine. So that's a nice way to explore a student's edge, what is enough for them. Further to this, some students will bring their elbows underneath their shoulders and be in the full expression of Sphinx pose with the shoulders rolling down the back and the chest energetically extending forwards and up. 
looking directly forward, so not too far down, not too high up. An option here would be to add a bolster or a rolled up blanket and slide that prop underneath the rib cage and place the forearms back on the floor over the top of the bolster. This is a great option as it allows the ribs to rest into the prop while still allowing you to maintain this supported back bend. It also takes the pressure off the arms and shoulders. Students might also enjoy the bolster if they're not quite coming into that depth of sphinx, but they are coming into a little more height. So maybe again, they put their hands one on top of the other on the bolster and rest their chin to the hands. If they have forearms to the floor and they want to rest the head and neck, you might bring a block under the forehead for them to rest into. Be mindful though with this one that the shoulders don't creep up to the ears. Still move the shoulders down the back. Keep length in the back of the neck. And then a couple options to deepen this would be in the full expression of Sphinx pose to then float your feet and shins away from the floor, keeping your thighs heavy to the mat. This might create more compression in the middle and lower back, and that might feel good for some students. They can also play with moving their feet and rolling the ankles. Further to this, this shape would extend into seal pose. So bring those feet back to the floor, pressing down with the tops of the feet, pressing into the hands and starting to extend the arms towards straight. Walking those hands as wide as your mat and turning the fingers out. This is seal pose. Again, very important cue, moving the shoulders down the back, opening the chest. And then one final piece, coming down with the chest. Instead of having forearms or flat hands to the floor, you could come into fingertip stand. So have your fingertips on the floor, either side of your mat. Take an inhale breath and lift your chin and your chest to a depth, to a height that works for you. Still a nice bend in those elbows. Sometimes it can be nice to gently turn the head to the right and back to center and over to the left and back to center and come all the way down. That's Sphinx. You come back onto your hands and knees into tabletop and just move through the hips. Have a breath. Okay, I'm going to do my best to run through these last couple. So the next one we're going to do together is Puppy Pose, Anahata Asana. So again, the first option I would offer is a blanket under the knees, because in this shape, we are going to be remaining on the knees. So we want our students to feel comfortable. I'm just bringing all the other props closer so they are accessible okay so once you're on hands and knees let's come into the shape we're walking the hands forwards and wide pelvis high we're melting the chest towards the earth keeping the pelvis high and not only are you melting the chest to the floor but you're melting the chest back towards your thighs you can either rest your forehead or your chin to the floor and you're breathing around your shoulders, your heart space, and under your arms. If students would like to bend the elbows more, no problem. Put more of the forearms on the floor. Maybe don't take the forehead or chin so low. 
maybe again you add a block under the forehead or under the chin. For students who are feeling pretty open in this shape, there's a couple of options for them. So they could have their arms extending long. Maybe they play with how wide the arms go or how parallel the arms go to see if that changes the sensation for them. Or they could come into finger stands, so fingertips to the floor, arm bones lifting. Maybe that deepens the stretch around their shoulders and underarms. Or maybe hands come onto blocks. So again, you get that slight elevation through the arms and maybe a deeper stretch around chest and shoulders. So there you have puppy pose. A nice option or variation of puppy pose would be to come back into more of a tabletop position. Inhale the right arm into the sky Exhale the right arm under the left and come into a gentle upper back twist while still keeping that pelvis high. You can keep your left hand where it is. You could walk your left fingers forwards like you would in puppy pose or left arm to the sky or behind your back. And of course, if you do something on the right side, you always repeat it on the left side at some point in the class. Okay, I've got two more on my list, so I'm really hoping I can get to them. The next one is a seated forward fold. So we will come around to a seat, bring the legs in front of us. This shape is Paschimottanasana. So with no props, it would look like this. Pelvis rooting down, legs extending forwards, feet flexing, legs your hip distance apart hands on the earth or hands on the thighs, inhaling the breath to begin, long spine, exhale, hinge forwards from the hips, slide the hands down the fronts of the legs and look towards your shins, only going to a place where you feel enough stretch. Don't need to force it, don't need to reach for the toes if that just encourages the back to round. Your forward fold is wherever you're feeling the stretch. So we know a lot of students have very tight hamstrings or lower backs. So this is where the props will be our best friends. So a block option under the pelvis can make a huge difference. Not only are you sitting on the block, but you're encouraging your students to sit right on the edge of that block, almost like they'll fall off it. And what this does, it tilts the pelvis forwards. So the pelvic bowl will be already moving in the direction we want to go. So block under the pelvis, maybe a bolster under the knees or other blocks or a rolled up blanket. So there is a bit more softness to the legs. This can be great for tight hamstrings. Make sure your students are with their legs, their hip distance apart, not with the legs glued together as this is going to create compression in the hips before we've even started to fall forwards. So make sure your students have their legs, their hip distance apart and in parallel, feet flexed. And the final option here is to wrap a strap around the soles of the feet and then wrap the ends of the strap around your wrists. And this can then become a lever to help you hinge forwards. So these are lots of options to accommodate this forward fold. Another option is for students who are hinging a little further forwards and might enjoy adding a support under the forehead. So maybe they bring the bolster in between the legs and adjust the mold, the position of the bolster so they can rest their forehead to it. They could also do this with their blocks, forehead to the block. And then you have lots of options for hands reaching towards the feet. So 
hands can rest over the tops of the toes or the outer edges of the feet or you could take the peace fingers and wrap them around the big toe mounds widen the elbows and come forwards from that place If students feel very open in their hamstrings, maybe they experiment with a block at the soles of the feet. So they have something to push into with their feet and then they wrap their hands around the block instead of the feet. And there we have a seated forward fold. The last option today is hero pose. For hero pose, we will begin on our knees and I will give options along the way because that's how I would do it in my class. And I know that even sitting like this is not for everybody's knees. So if I was guiding it, I would start here and then I would encourage my students to begin to wiggle their heels a little bit wider and start to nuzzle their pelvis into the space between the two heels. So the heels are actually to the outer edges of the hips, knees to the floor, sitting up. However, some students might like one or two blocks in that gap so that when the pelvis sits, there is way less pressure on the knees. So this is an option. If students have just one leg or the other that is causing them some difficulties in this pose, I encourage them to extend that leg forwards and just focus on the other leg being bent. Further to this, if students have left a uh, one or no props underneath their pelvis, they have the option <clears throat> to lean back into their hands. Their fingers are pointing towards their toes and beginning to extend length into the fronts of the quadriceps. If students have a block under their pelvis, this is as far as I would take them. If students have no props under their pelvis, they could come down onto their forearms. Or another option would be to place a bolster behind the back and maybe a block behind where the head is going to be. And I would have set this up prior to coming into it so students know where we're going and from there no props under the pelvis students can lower their back onto the bolster and lower the back of the head hands can remain close to the feet or on the rib cage or arms wide always maintaining knees to the floor if the knees have popped up off the floor then come back up if there's any pain, come back up. And then the final piece is for those who are pretty established in this shape. They can come all the way down with no props underneath their back or pelvis. Full expression of hero pose. Hands can be on the ribs wide or in a diamond shape overhead making sure that the pelvis is pressing forwards so that they are reducing the amount of compression in the lower back. Coming out, pressing into the forearms and elbows, then pressing into the hands and lifting the chest. Now, if this is just not for a lot of the students in the class, any of those options just aren't going to work. Another way you could access this pose is actually from the belly. So lying on the front body, one hand on top of the other, forehead to the hands, 
And then you would encourage, let's go with the left side. You'd encourage the left heel towards the glute, maybe with the left hand wrapping around the top of the left foot, encouraging heel towards glute and pressing the front of the pelvis to the floor, chin to the front hand or forehead to the front hand, or if it's more accessible, they can be up on their forearm. Or, <laughs> I can find my strap. Or they might loop the strap around the top of the left foot and then use the lever from the strap to bring the heel closer to the glute. And you can do that on both sides so those students get to engage in that hip flexor and quadricep lengthening process without perhaps so much pressure on the joints. So that was a quick dive into a handful of our asana. Please take a look at parts one and two. Part one is a lot more of our very regular poses that we come into. And the second part was more balancing poses. And this part has been a focus on folds and back bends. So I hope this has been useful, helpful. As always, we want to make all of our practices first and foremost safe, accessible and inclusive. And we want to give our students all of the options so they can make choices and feel empowered on their yoga mats. So thank you for joining me. Reach out with any questions about what I offer today and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.